This is another tutorial on setting constraints in an iOS app. I have a form here that presents a question as a label, and there are several buttons for recording responses. There's also a pair of labels at the top of the form for tracking the status and the time of the uh, questions. In the case of my status label in the upper left, I provide it with a top level, top space constraint, and I also provide it with a leading space constraint. And that gives me enough information to set this position uh, without any ambiguity. I do the same thing with the timer, except rather than relying on the leading space, I'm going to peg it to the right-hand side of the form, and so it only has its trailing space. But that gives it enough to display itself without any ambiguity. Now, for each of the labels and buttons, I am setting the uh, leading space to be the container and the trailing space to be a container. And then with regards to top space, I'm setting it to the um, topmost neighbor. So the answer is pegged to the status, uh, the question is pegged to the status label, and then each answer to the question, and then on to other answers till we get to the bottom one, and there are no other constraints. The form looks good in portrait mode, and if I click preview, you see that's true for both the iPhone 5 and the iPhone 6. However, if I rotate the iPhone 5, notice that a, an important button is truncated and chopped. It's jammed right up to the edge of the phone. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to reclaim some of this white space that's up here for the display of this button. And I don't want to do that programmatically. I'd like to continue doing that through the storyboard. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to specify some constraints such that I give some more importance to the display of the button at the expense of the white space between this question and then these status items here. So what I'm going to do is create a second constraint. This is a second vertical spacing constraint. And I'm going to say that the one with the equality is going to have a priority of 400. So that's less than all of the priorities here to, to this point, which are set to, by default to 1,000. I'm going to give a second priority uh, of 500 to this other query, uh, this other constraint that I just added. And I'm going to make that a greater than or equal constraint. So I'm going to say it's more important that we have this greater than or equal to than it is to set this uh, one equal to. Okay, now I drag down onto this uh, Bridgeport item and I'm going to say bottom space to bottom layout guide. Now that wasn't necessary for the display of this form, but I'm going to set up an inequality here, which is greater than or equal to, and I want it to be at all times greater than or equal to, uh, let's say, uh, let's say 10. And I'm going to give it a priority of 750. Now when I go and display this in preview, you'll see that there's some adequate space over here, and I can reclaim more space or I can tweak this layout as needed. I might choose to reclaim some of this uh, space at this point. And that's the purpose of the priorities. Now, priority of 400, 500, 750, those are arbitrary selections that I made. What's important is that there is a relative ordering. They could have been only one increment off rather than 400 versus 500. It could have been 401 versus 402. Um, so it's really the relative ones. If you use some broad bands of numbers, like a jump of 100, you have a little more flexibility for putting in a different constraint and not worrying about having to go back over your constraints and renumber everything. Now, this part can seem a little bit um, difficult to understand because I've got a new constraint that's saying I want Bridgeport to be greater than or equal to, and I want the top space to be greater than or equal to. Well, why double up on the constraints? If I take this constraint, now this is a, con a constant of 39 of a lower priority, and I pull that off in the case, you'll notice that my uh, storyboard goes out of whack. And that's because I've just introduced ambiguity. In this portrait setting, there are many ways to solve this. I'm no longer bound by the shortened and restricted space of the landscape mode. Back in portrait mode, this is now messed up because I can represent this in a lot of different ways. So I need to have that constraint as an additional guidance to the auto layout. And I'll come back in here and I'll make that constraint the uh, 400 item, but it's of less importance. And you can see the change taken preview. So 
over here, um, in a relatively uh, simple fashion, I was able to do some some stacking of these vertical spaces. But when I went into auto layout, uh, that didn't work for me because in the constrained landscape mode, I was having all of the um, controls uh, move off the screen. And if you don't provide scrolling, or maybe you don't want to use scrolling at all because it's it's too inconvenient for the users, you can you can stack these and order these using priority values that you set set uh, based on the principles of what you want to see. Um, and from there, you're able to do all of this through auto layout and not through code. Uh, certainly not trying to capture any type of landscape event or something like that. Thank <laughs> you.